Romans 8, the 16th verse. And this is Apostle Paul writing. And it reads, The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if you remember that um, in the book of Matthew uh, 18 is when the apostles was debating about who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And Jesus had a child to come forth. And he says that unless you are uh, like this little child, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that's um, one thing that you can say about uh, children is that they need help. They need help. I mean, you, you can come up with a lot of reasons why he may have uh, used a child. What is the characteristic of a child that he had in mind? Um, but we all can agree that a child always needs help. Uh, whether it's to, to, to be closed, whether they are being instructed, or whether uh, you know, they're they going to need some guidance, uh, they're going to need food. And so uh, that's one of the things he wanted to get over to the disciples is that when you were, uh, yes. You know, the, Yes. Totally dependent upon him. Totally. Totally. Exactly. Because exactly. We can't do it on our own and we can't make it without him. Exactly. It's like we don't depend on us, we have to depend on Christ. Exactly. And we don't depend on the parents. And you know this in the world, they'll say, hey, you can make it, you can do it. <laughs> and they, they give you that rah, rah, rah. Uh, and and it, that stuff comes on in the church too. And next thing you know, they write self help books. And uh, all you got to do is believe it and claim it and all that carrying on. No, that wasn't what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, you have to be totally dependent on me. You're going to have to change your way of thinking. Because they were discussing who's going to be the greatest. And he was letting them know. Uh, the kingdom of God is not like the world. It don't work like the world does. And so you have to be totally dependent on God. Uh, and now, some of the, now some of these health books, if it has a godly principle behind it, uh, you can glean that out of that. But you can never depend on you making it on your own and by your own strength. That's what the world does. There's no liking in the world of confidence. They feel like we can make it. We don't need God. And we can make it on our own just as well. Okay? But uh, faith is it's not just trust. That's part of it. But that's not all of it. And so God intends for us to be totally dependent upon him. Uh, how many times have you tried to do things yourself? Uh, a lot of times we'll do it before we uh, inquire of the Lord. And a lot of times you'll find out that uh, you, you do need help. That just because you want to, to, to believe it, don't make it so. Okay, because faith, when you operate in the, in the realm of faith, because that the Bible said without faith, it's impossible. It's impossible to please God. And so if you want to please God, then you have to uh, have the faith. And so uh, that's what Jesus did. He, he, he set that child. You can imagine how shocked they probably were <laughs> for him to get a child and sit before him. It says, unless you become as this child, unless you are converted. Remember Peter? That's a good example. It just came to mind. I don't have it in here. But uh, uh, that just came to mind. Uh, Peter wasn't totally dependent on, on the Lord. Even though he had been with him all that time, had been taught, uh, when, when it came down to it, 
uh, Peter Fine Now, you know, all of them said at one time, uh, we'll go, we'll go with you. We'll give our life with you. But what happened? Okay. <laughs> and so Peter would depend on his sword. First thing Peter did, he pulls his sword. Okay, that's after he denied him. He denied him three times. He even cursed. I don't know him. And so he was he was dependent upon himself. He had confidence in himself. He wasn't dependent upon what Jesus was telling him. Jesus was telling him what was going to go down. And so uh, he realized that Jesus knew what he was talking about. And so and he tells Peter, when you are converted, and then you help your brother. Okay? Because when you have failed at something and you thought you were strong in that area and you find out that you really do need the Lord, then you are able to help the next person that comes along. And maybe they might have that same spirit, that same attitude that they can do it on their own. And you can let them know that you have to uh, totally depend upon the Lord. I, I know uh, many times um, when you go up there to get ordained, one thing stand out is you say with the help of the Lord, <laughs> because you can't get up there and talk about what you're gonna do. <laughs> you you can't even you can't swear. You can't go to court and swear I'm gonna tell the truth because uh, if the heat get to you, you don't know what you may do. And so the best thing to do is not to even swear. Just, just confirm to the best of my ability with the help of God. Uh, if you always put that in there with the help of God, <laughs> with the help of God, I can make it. And so uh, that was a powerful re uh, revelation. Amen. Like El Elder was saying, you come to that re re revelation, revelation that uh, you are helpless and you have to depend upon the Lord. Um, and, and so uh, we must learn to trust in God it, because with our faith it is impossible to please him. Another example uh, that comes to mind is when the children was uh, children of Israel uh, had their back to the Red Sea and uh, you see that they was helpless. Uh, matter of fact they didn't have the faith that they that God had made a way. Because they started saying, you know, boy, why I know it was in their mind, why in the world did we listen to you? <laughs> why did we come out of Egypt in the first place? And, and so uh, it was the fact that uh, Moses prayed and, and God even asked, you know, why are you praying? Move, go fall. Because God had already made a way. So no matter how helpless you may seem, there's always helping God. Because when you are weak, uh, then that is when you're the strongest. We like to think that, you know, we have to muscle up our strength. No, we got strength in the Lord. And so when we're weak and when we're the help, most helpless, and that is when the power of God shines forth. How many times, I know we got ministers in the house. How many times you don't know what you're going to say? You get up here and you thought you were going to go one way. God takes you another way. It, it is because it, it, the, the strength, the power, the word is coming from the Lord. And then you come, you think you got it all together and fall all to pieces. <laughs> and why? Because you didn't put your trust and your confidence. God is able to do his, his own thing. He's able to use you, but you have to realize you got to lean on God. Uh, Moses had to realize because he, he felt like I am not a, a great speaker and so God said who made your mouth and so you can't look at you can't focus on yourself you have to focus on the one you represent when, when you're representing somebody they'll, they'll do everything else they'll take care of it as long as you represent them I'll never forget the time uh, who was this secretary of state I think on the car it was um, Cyrus Vance. 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 Okay, is it Carter I'm thinking about then? 
Oh, I don't know why his name skipped me. You remember he was, um, I think he was, was negotiating with Israel or something. And the administration had one view. Andrew Young. That's who it was. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did I get it wrong though? Was that on the card? He was on the card. He was on the card. He was on the card. Okay. Okay. It was Andrew Young. The reason he messed up is because he let his personal view. Because when you represent somebody else, you can't let your personal view get ahead of you. You have to represent. And, and it's the same with Christ. If you're representing Christ, you cannot let yourself get involved. Uh, you, you have to represent him. And, and, and that's where he made his mistake. Instead of representing the United States, representing the administration, then he let his own personal view uh, get in the way. Uh, so um, that is a, a, another example where the people was absolutely helpless. And, and when you ab ab absolutely helpless, when, when you're disarmed and you don't have nothing else to hold on to, because when the Lord told uh, Peter, put up your sword, that was it for Peter. <laughs> because that's what he was depending on. He was depending on that sword to fight his battle. And so after he had to put his sword up, because Jesus said, look, if I wanted to fight, you know if Jesus wanted to fight, it, it, hey, no doubt. He said, I, I call the legions of angels if he wanted to fight. And, and so he didn't need Peter's sword. And so when he put his swords up, then that did it for what he had in mind. Okay. And the the next one I, um, I'm thinking about is uh, King Asa. In Israel, they was helpless against the Ethiopians. Um, they had a million man army. Can you imagine a million million man army, three uh, three hundred chariots? And the Bible says Asa cried unto the Lord, and you know what he said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many. Or with them that are of no power. It don't matter. You know China boasting now about their million man army. <laughs> but if God want to fight. It don't matter how many uh, chariots you got. How many planes you got. None of that stuff matters. Okay. And so he said if God want to help us. Then that, that don't mean anything what's coming up against you. We as saints of God, we can have that same attitude. I don't care who's coming up against you. When God is on your side, when God is fighting your battle, you don't have to worry about it. Everything's going to be all right. Just like Joseph, when his brothers fought against him and did all those things with Joseph, he realized God is meaning all of this that's happening to me for my good. And so he didn't hold it against that brother. Now, usually when somebody do you wrong, you know, they don't want you to get in a, a position of power because they feel like you're going to do what? Pay them back. <laughs> they think you're going to have that same spirit. And it's in the Word. I guarantee you it's in the Word. Why they want to hold a certain group of people down? Because they're thinking that if they ever get in a position, they're going to pay us back. Everybody don't do that. Everybody don't pay you back the way you paid them. There are some people that would do kindness. Even though you treat them dirty, they would still uh, turn around and do you some kindness. As the uh, first lady uh, said in the last election, when they go low, you go high. There's something to that. Okay. And, and so he knew that God was able to help. And he said, for we rest on thee. And in thy name, we go against this multitude. Let not man prevail against thee. And listen to what he said. He didn't say, don't let them prevail against us. He says, don't let them prevail against thee. When David was fighting Goliath, he wasn't fighting in his own name. He wasn't insulted because 
of what it was it was saying about the people, he was insulted because here you got this uncircumcised Philistine talking this stuff about God. And so when David went against him, he didn't go against him in his own name. He, he went in the name of the Lord. And he ran. The Bible said he ran to me. He don't turn and run. Because if you check your armor, there's nothing in that armor that'll protect your back. Because you don't need it. We are not on the defense, we are on the offense. All the gates of hell shall not prevail against. That means you're going against the gates of hell. You're not waiting for them to come out. We're going against the gates of hell. And the Bible has promised it's not going to prevail against us. And so we got uh, the Lord word on that. And the Bible says the Lord smote the uh, Ethiopians before uh, Asa and before Judah. And then listen to what Asa says in his prayer. Lord, we are helpless. Lord, we are helpless. We can't do nothing. And somebody, some, some people would have said, oh, you already beat. Cause you, <laughs> you already done beat your own self. Talking about you helpless and you can't do nothing. He was telling the truth. Against that million man army, they couldn't do anything. And they had the weapons. The power is all yours. But see, you can say that to God. You don't want your enemy to hear you saying that. You, but you can say this to God. He has Elder Big Williams. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. See, when you talk to God, you, you don't want your enemies to, to hear that. Because they're going to take it the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the power is all yours, and we are dead unless you help. We don't have it if you don't help. And you know what? God heard them. God heard that prayer. And, and so we have to put our trust and our confidence in the Lord. Have faith in God. And the Bible says that that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, and then it, it, it shows you how, how uh, faith operates. It is the substance of things. Hope for. It's not the thing itself. It don't look like the thing itself, but it'll get you there. Because those that put their trust and confidence in God, the Bible said they do exploits. Those, those uh, people of faith in the Old Testament, that's why it, it's in the Bible, so that we will learn from their experiences that they had. Abraham believed God. That even in his old age, and his wife too, God waited till both of them were dead in their body. In other words, they couldn't have children. They was too old. What we call they, they beyond childbearing age. But yet they had a child of promise. And then after the child of promise had, then God tells them to take that child. And you know they love that child. Take that child, offer him up. But Abraham had enough faith says, hey, we're coming back. Because God had gave him promises concerning that child. And when God gives you a promise, he will fulfill it. I don't care how dead it looked. I don't care how it looked like. It's against hope. I think that's what the Bible says. It was against hope. In other words, it was against what we consider to be hope. But he knew that if he did what God told him, even if he took his child's life, 
He wasn't putting confidence in the fact that God was going to stop him. He was putting confidence in the fact that even if he took his life, God could raise him back up from the dead and fulfill his promise. And so if the angel hadn't stopped him, good thing he did, probably don't, won't nobody want to experience that kind of experience, taking their child's life. But God was able to raise him up. That was the point of it. It was God that was still able to raise him up and to fulfill the promises that he had. And you remember when Jesus was talking about his death and Peter says, you know, let it be far from you. And Jesus' reaction was, you thinking like me in the because he knew this is something that has to be done. This is something that has to be done. Because when he prayed in, in Gethsemane, when he prayed and he said, if there's any other way for this cup to pass, well, there wasn't any other way because this was God's plan. Not my will, but let your thy will be done. And so that's what we have to do is to our will have to coincide with what God wants to do. We have to yield to God's will. Now we can tell God all about how we feel. <laughs> Can't we? Yeah, he, even the sinners. He tells them, hey, let's reason together. Now he can tell you you're you going to change his mind. That's not what he's saying. But we can, we can talk about this stuff. Don't you do your kids like that? You know you're not going to change your mind. <laughs> but we're going to talk about this thing and, and that is a blessing Now that to talk to your kids Because see they didn't talk to us I was say. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't But I believe that's part of growth If you talk to them Even if they don't get it Even if they don't understand The fact that you took the time To try to explain it to them and one day they'll get it. But ours was, look, it's cause I said, we, they were like stone cold. <laughs> you know that wrestler, his saying is, because stone cold says so. <laughs> no. Uh, hey, explain to them. To the best you can. I, I, athletes on the floor, and I still try to explain to him why. And, and he, oh man, he loved that word. Why? Why? <laughs> and, and so even when things are getting worse and look like you head toward disaster, there's always help in the Lord. There's always help in the Lord. And when we was going into the, that pandemic, you know, a lot of people was uh, stressed out and, and worried. But if you put your trust and your confidence in God, hallelujah, glory to God. Especially when you got your life together. The important thing is that you got your soul secure. That's the important thing. You want your stuff secure. Because I had a, a niece and nephew, and <laughs> they were trying to tell on each other about their girlfriend, boyfriend. And so he was telling on her, and she was just denying it. Oh, no, I don't like him. No, I don't like him. And then she decided, she, okay, you did that. I'm going to tell him who you like. And he said, that's okay. It's my stuff so here. <laughs> he said, you can talk all you want. And so we our stuff need to be secure in Christ. No, no, I don't care what anybody else say about it. I know who he is. Amen. And so we have to realize we are children of God. The Bible said his spirit witness to our spirit. So we got to witness who we are. You got a front seat. You know what God has did in your life. You know how he brought you out. And so you don't have to try to convince somebody else. Because when you're trying to convince somebody else, who are you trying to convince? Because the foundation is God know those that are his. God know those that are his. 
Paul has some, sometimes says, okay, you say, consider that I'm saved too. <laughs> you, you know, there was a time when, uh, I hate to see that, but sometimes, you know, certain churches think they're the only one saved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they want to be just keeping that little group and they don't know, you're not the only one saved. Even when Jesus was up on the earth, you remember they came across this group that was uh, casting out demons in his name, and the disciples come to him and says, hey, you need to make them stop. He says, look, if you're not against me, you must be for me. Just because you're not of that group. Don't mean that God got all kinds of people. And you don't have to be of a certain group. And so, when you don't know what to do, um, the Bible tells us that when we are at the point that we don't know what to do, the Bible tells us what to do. He says, you walk by faith. When you don't understand what God is doing, you don't understand the situation, you continue to walk by faith. I'm trying to think, I think it was Habakkuk God gave that instruction to. Uh, Habakkuk had some questions and he was confused. And God says, walk by faith. You walk by faith. And God didn't go down the line and try to explain every little thing to him that he was doing. I don't think he explained Job either. I don't think he ever told Job why. But Job learned some things. First of all, he learned you can't depend on your friend. Because <laughs> Job had to give them some good advice. When you are suffering, you don't need somebody kicking at you. When you're sick and you're down, you don't need nobody telling you, oh, well, you must have did something wrong. <laughs> all of us did something wrong. <laughs> And so at the end, you remember Job had to pray for him. God said, Now go and let him pray for you. <laughs> the very one they were putting down. And Job realized that he was going to come forth. And he said, I'm going to come forth like fine gold. Because he knew he was in the fire. You know when you're in the fire. And you're not in the fire for no reason. And here's the thing. God's not going to destroy what's precious. He's just shaking some stuff up. So you can see that thing that can't be shaken. You know, sometimes you think you got a solid foundation. But then when God gets down shaking, you'll see if it's a solid foundation. But the things of God, his word is one of them. The Bible says he watches over his word. You're never going to shake his word. And faith is something that manifests. It's not something that you just say. You, you don't just say you believe it. And there's no change, no manifestation. Paul says if you show your faith without words, then I will show you my faith by my works. And so he's saying... Faith without works is dead. You cannot have intelligent faith. You can have head faith. Faith goes down to your spirit. It is part of who you are. It is part of your life when you begin to walk by the faith of God.
um, the apostle said we were made a gazing stock, a, a picture of suffering for the whole world. Um, if you look at what was going on with the apostle at the time of uh, 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 right when the church was formed, it was the apostles that was the one that had to uh, usually leave for their lives. And a lot of times the churches that was established could stay, but when it comes to uh, the head, most time they would have to run because uh, one thing about the world is that they do not want uh, to establish the principles of, of God. Now even nations that pretend to be Christian, if you look behind what they do and the spirit behind what they're doing, then you'll realize that even if they say they are Christian, because the first Christian, remember the first Christian was uh, called Christian as Antioch. And the reason they were called Christian is because they were Christ-like. And that's what we strive for is to be Christ-like. Now, what happens many times when we talk about salvation, many people, and I, I can put myself in there. When I got saved, I just felt like, oh, I'm ready to go to heaven now. Lord, and take me now. <laughs> you know. But the thing is, very rarely do God save somebody and then take them. You're going to have to stay here. You're going to have to grow. You're going to have to put your part in because the, the reason the Bible was written is so that our lives could be corrected and that we live holy lives. You had a life to live. Uh, yes. Exactly. Exactly. And many times you hear, oh, what about the man on the cross? Well, what did he do in his life? Is that it? For some reason, that's what people put on the top of the list. I'm just going to heaven. That's the number one thing. Forget everything else. No. No. I'm glad he was saved, but who did he come bring to Christ in his lifetime? What did he do in his lifetime? What do the Bible says uh, when you stand before him, what are you going to be judged on? Isn't it what you, gonna, what you did in this life? What you said in this life? So he may suffer loss, but yet he saved. Exactly. And I wouldn't argue with that. that that's, that's God's arena. I mean, if he want to save them and snatch them right on up, that's God. I that don't have nothing to do with that. But if you won't be here a while, then he gave me a job. Right. <laughs> he gave you a job. Then you have to be on the job as long as you're here. You can't go on a, a natural job and, and goof off. <laughs> they come in there, hey, what you doing? You're supposed to be on, on the clock. As long as you're on the clock, you're supposed to be working. Okay. <laughs> I'll never forget the time um, I worked for this construction company. And sometimes these companies would, um, they call farming you out. They would actually pay your wage. And it wasn't, wasn't anything to do. He's supposed to be watching something. I can't remember what it was. His job was to watch something. Well, he fell asleep. <laughs> and so they called the office and told him what happened. So they called him in there and they fired him. And the owner says, I can't use the, the language he used. But he, he said, I, I don't mind paying you doing nothing, but I'd be, if I'm gonna pay you to sleep. <laughs> but he, he had fell asleep and all he had to do was to watch. And you got to watch, as long as the adversary is roaming, you got to be watchful.
And if I had a, 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 a watch dog and he didn't bark, <laughs> he, I wouldn't be buying no puppy child. <laughs> uh -uh. A stranger come up, he just do what he want to do, and he just, he's not saying nothing. Not saying a word. That, that's part of what they <laughs> I remember Dre had a dog. And that dog, people come in there and steal. And that dog just let him come in there and everything. Those dogs that what? That dog that yeah, so, they, they won't, uh uh. Yeah, so the police saw the people. So, because the musket battery called and told them that somebody was in the house and the dude was watching out. And the police saw and says, uh, hey, come here. Let me talk to you. So he went in there and they handcuffed him and got the other people that was in there. <laughs> because the dog wouldn't even bark. <laughs> that was that. Oh. They said, that's it, I'm down with him. <laughs> wouldn't even bark. And so you have to, you have to be watchful. You, you got to be watchful for those that uh, under you, and you got to be watchful for yourself. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Amen. And, and you know God take care of His children. You, you don't yes, run he out. He won't run out on you. Amen. 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 We have a Father that won't fail us. We don't know everything that's going to happen in this life, but we do know He is our help. Yes. The Bible said, present help in time of trouble. Yes. Yes. And there's shelter under His wing. Yes. It, 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 was, the Amen. scripture says the name of the Lord is a strong power. Yes. For the righteous run in and they are saved. He gives us peace. Yes. The best peace you can have is the peace of God. Yes. Amen. Not just peace with God, but it's talking about the peace of God. Yes. That will give you real peace. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about joy, there's joy in salvation. Yes. You can just draw it out of the well. Let's think about how, how good God has been to us. Mm -hmm. And is to us. Yes. And then you can think about how good of God he is. You, you can worship and praise him for who he is. Not just what he's done. And I thank God for the things he do. He do some good stuff. Yeah. And he's doing some good stuff. Has done some good stuff. Going to do some good stuff. <laughs> but you want to get from praise to worship. You start praising him just because he's God. Yes. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. When they say if he don't do nothing else. Oh, thank you, glory to God. If he don't do nothing else. He's still worthy. Yes. Because he's God. He's somebody you want to get to know. He is somebody you want to get to know. Of all the people that you know, he is the number one yes, is. at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. And so even when we go through hardships in this life, you have to realize that there is a purpose See, there's a purpose behind the things that we go through. And, and usually when we're in the fire, the first thing we want is out. <laughs> we don't want to give it time to do this work. We don't want to give it time to work on our character. Because the things you go through, it builds character. 
And people pay attention. You know, people pay attention. People pay attention to you. You might think nobody's looking. People are paying attention to you. Especially when you talk about Jesus, when you start talking about Jesus, they're going to make sure they look at you. <laughs> And because they want to know. See, see, that's how the world knows. The world knows us by the love that we have. Isn't that scripture? The love know, the, 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 the world knows us by the love we have for one another. And then when you have that build that relationship with Christ, then they know you by your fruits. And you can rec you can begin to recognize the fruit. And Jesus says, you can't get a good fruit from a bad tree. I don't care how good it looks. You can walk up, oh man, that looks good. If that tree is no good, that fruit not going to be good. I, I tried my hand. It had been a long time since I raised tomatoes. And I went out there and every one of them had root, they, you know, seen root rot. <laughs> and I looked it up and it says lack of calcium, uh, lack of water. But anyway, every, every last one, after you get so, a certain size, it will rot right on the bottom. So we are to produce good fruit because we are to be a good tree. I know he used vine in one of the parables, but he used a, a tree also. And so, no matter what, what kind of words coming out of the person's mouth, it is what in that heart, what's in that spirit. He said, why do you call me Lord and you don't do what I say? Don't you know there's a lot of good people, what we call good people that's not saved? There's some nice people in the world. Some of them probably wouldn't label nicer than some church folk. <laughs> they just are sweet and nice, but you can't talk to them about Jesus. Because it, it, and I bet that said that on the air. <laughs> well, I'm going to. But the sob, you know, that is, is uh, Bible Belt. And my daughter said, Dad, that's the hardest place. <laughs> you think it would be easy? No, it's the hardest place. Why? Because they think they got it all ready. And so you can't tell them anything. Then the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they thought they had it all ready. You don't think they were honest about what they was doing? To them, they, they was honest. And they was committed. But they had missed it. Even Paul had missed it. Paul says, I did it because of my ignorance. But Paul thought he had it going on. You know he had heard about Jesus. And his, his comeback was, I'm going to take care of these people. I'm going to round them up. But he had an encounter with Jesus. On the way down to Damascus. And so just because people are religious. Jesus didn't come. Because of religious folk. He came for a relationship. Jesus wanted a relationship. If you read in the Old Testament, God always wanted a relationship with his people. From the very beginning, uh, when he brought Israel out, his, his original plan was to dwell among the people. And you know why he couldn't dwell among the people? The Bible tells us why. He said, I am a consuming fire. And he told Moses, if I dwell among these people and I break out, you know there will be nothing left. And so that's why he wasn't able to. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believed in him will have eternal life. Jesus, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He came to show us what God was really like. If, if you want to see what God is really like, all you have to do is look at Jesus. And not only that, he'll give you revelations and revelations to know what God is really like. So do we have any uh, comments on our lesson? Anyone have comments on it? Uh, yes, tell me, Wade. soldiers of that day, their duty, and they still could have had their own thoughts. But uh, a soldier in that day, you did your job regardless because if you lost a prisoner and you didn't fulfill your duty, uh, you were the one to pay. And, and so even I often, kind of along your lines, you remember when the jailer took him home? He was in a pickle. <laughs> when he took him home with him, and I'm thinking, if, if it hadn't came down to release him, what was he going to do? But, you know, God works it out. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, he was ready to take his own life. And then, then he wanted to take them home or something. Yeah, he well, they hadn't been released. Yeah, Paul said, hey, don't do, do no harm to yourself. We're all here. Mm -hmm. You haven't lost one of us. And, you know, they were unchained, but, you know, free in the prison, but they were all there. Yeah. yeah. You, you either take your own life or they do it for you. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't play. So, so if they gave you an assignment, you're supposed to be watching this prison, and he escaped. Then uh, you either kill yourself, they gonna do it for you. <laughs> so it, it amazed me how uh, the Japanese during the World War they they were just give enough fuel to make it to that target. They weren't supposed to come back. But that was interesting. But it, the Bible do tell us that when the um, did it, the sun oh it went dark didn't it at, at Jesus' crucifixion there was a centurion that says this is the son of God and so I know that was enough to move them but then you have people no matter what <laughs> they just refuse Look at all the miracles Jesus did. And instead of believing, you had one group, that's all they wanted. They wanted him, they wanted to see him, whether Pilate or Herod won, they wanted to see him perform a miracle as if it was some kind of show.
and you had also, uh, I was thinking about too, you remember the, when uh, they went up before Pharaoh and they had uh, magicians and they did some stuff you, you can't explain but then Moses did beyond because when he threw his rod down it ate theirs <laughs> and so the devil have his little program going too they have some little programs going like Samuel when, uh, when uh, Saul went to the soothsayer she conjured him up didn't she he spoke they killed them all but he managed to find him one when he couldn't hear from God and that's what I say. Uh, they used to come on TV quite often. You know, late at night, you call this number and they're going to tell you whatever. Well, you don't need that if you got a connection with God. Amen. You want to call them up for? We don't call them out. Uh-huh. And then they bankrupt next year. <laughs> They didn't see it coming. Yeah, exactly. They didn't see it coming. <laughs> but no, there was there's a uh, the devil can do stuff too. He he can't do it like the Lord. But you you know in the um, book of Revelation, I believe he's gonna be able to call fire down. And so he he's limited, but he is some stuff he can do too. Because that's what he do. He try to counterfeit. Right, right. Whatever God do, he gonna try to counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. If there's nothing else, uh, continue to pray for one another. Uh, continue to be safe. They got a new variants out, and it's it's kind of picking up. And so, uh, and we are grandparents. As of today. <laughs> well, thank you. It's a girl. And my wife probably can pronounce the name better than me. It's going to take me some time. It's Adil Linnell. Adil. A D I E L L E. And my mom's name was A D E L L. I thought that looked familiar. Yeah. <laughs> they got some extra letters in there, but I said, yeah, okay. I don't know what that she did that on purpose. And she did it because of the, what the name is, but oh, okay. it kind of worked out that way. So. Yeah. How much did she weigh? Six pounds, six ounces, and she's 20 inches long. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and so, uh, we'll, if Lois will, we'll be leaving uh, Tuesday. And coming back Monday, the, following the, the following Monday. And so keep us in prayer. Amen. We appreciate that. Continue to pray for one another. Remember the uh, prayer request that uh, Sister Patina sent out a list of all those that are on the. Okay, if there's nothing else, let us stand. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do, oh Lord Jesus. You are helping time of trouble, person helping time to meet, oh God. We ask you to continue to bless every soul that's got here today, oh Lord Jesus. And we be careful, you be honored, you be praised, you be all the glory. We thank you for the peace. Thank you for the joy that you give us, oh God. Help us continue to rightly divide that word of truth and apply it in our lives, oh Lord. And we be careful, you be honored, you be praised, you be all the glory. God, remember those we come in contact with, Lord. Oh God. Teach us, O oh Lord, what to say, O oh God, that they may we may draw them unto you, O oh Lord. We be careful of the grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.